kind of, uh, I get questions on cart building tips all the time. We, we build an enormous amount of carts yes. at M squared and you know, and we've been doing it for, you know, 20 something, 23 years now out of the shop. You're and, right. Bonner is old. And prior to that, prior to that, we were working at another shop. He was five when he started at the <laughs> shop. So. I love it. <laughs> And so I, I get, I get this question all the time. I mean, what are some tips? And so I've always got, you know, I, I feel that we do a good job at building carts, reliable carts. Um, we spend a lot of time in the way that we build a cart to ensure that it not only stays together, but that it's fast. And, and so there's just some tips that I've learned along the way that I've, that are not always my own. And I've learned from other good mechanics and tuners. Um, and, and so Bonner, kind of what would be a tip that you would, in, in building a cart. Hey, that, you, you ambushed me there. I thought you were going to answer. I, do, I was oh, kind of, well, I so thought. I'll, I'll start. <laughs> I'll start with it. Then. Okay. So one of the things I see quite often and is when the assembly of the cart's taking place and we're going to talk about how the fuel lines or throttle cable or wiring harnesses are fixed to the chassis. Oftentimes we'll see people use a zip tie because it's quick and easy and zip tie those items to the chassis. The downside I find to that is if you happen to uh, get two wheels off the, the track and it slides that chassis across the edge of the asphalt, you're going to take that zip tie and you're going to pull on it and it's going to pull it down the chassis. And so you, potentially if you've got your throttle cable hooked into that, it's going to try to pull the throttle cable housing out of the, the boot that it sits in which is then going to make that throttle feel like it's sticking. And so instead of a zip tie, I prefer to use uh, electrical tape. Sure. And do a couple wraps around in multiple sections so that if you do wear through a section, you know, the chassis can be completely wore out on the bottom, but you still got electrical tape around most of the tube holding that on, uh, you know, whether it's the wiring harness, fuel line, throttle cable. Um, which then gives you the opportunity once you get back in from that session to see that there's an issue and, and fix it at that point. And easy enough, another extra wrap. Yep. Yeah, well, and also if the, uh, if the zip tie just breaks, then the throttle cable drags on the ground, wears through, and you DNF. Yeah. Yeah, and it's all over. It'll actually get up underneath of everything. Yeah, so Spring. Yeah, that's a good tip. Uh, my tip would be if you're building your own cart, uh, pay very close attention to seat mounting. That's the most important part of building a cart is that the seat is mounted properly in the right spot. Uh, it, you can take a fantastic chassis and turn it into an ill-handling hunk of junk if the seat is... So as far as um, seat uh, uh, proper height, proper tension, and... Um washer so there's yeah it's every, not everything from the the frame tabs being aligned properly with the seat so it's not when you tighten it it doesn't bind to just the attitude of the seat itself uh i we've seen some really messed up stuff come into the shop where that you know the seat is actually like on an angle yeah I, I don't well i just took that one oh there's there's the watch out of the studio the the, the old four cycle uh, i learned a lot it's on the wall now. I learned a lot mounting mounting seats onto that. Yep. Yeah. yeah so you just I did it a bunch You can't of times. just slap it in there any old way in any position. You need to find out from someone who knows that particular brand and model of cart where should the seat go, and do it right because it's it's critical. Okay. It's nothing more important than the seat mounting. So. Yep. I agree. Okay. One. You got another one. Well, I about the, the, about the building the cart. Yeah, I mean, and this is another really common one we get when somebody comes in wanting to buy a complete cart, um, and they say, well, can I save money if I build it myself? And the short answer is no. No. Um, because, you know, if you look at the price of a, a cart, you know, an assembled cart price, it's going to be the biggest chunk of money you spend in your carting. Sure. But there is extremely little margin in that. And, and if you are comparing to internet prices versus shop prices or whatever, if a shop is, is grossly overpriced compared to an internet shop, um, you know, it's, there's, there is, there's not a difference so much in, in the actual parts of that go-kart, but 
that you're going to notice that the shop's really not charging for labor to build that cart. And it would be much better off if you allow the shop to build it, a reputable shop. And then if you want to figure out how it all goes together, take a bunch of pictures of it, go home and take it apart, put it together. There's no way. Just the way that it was built. There's no way you could pull it off. I, I don't think, I mean, even taking, you have no idea. You look at it, you go, it's relatively simple. It's just yeah. bars and a couple, two things turn this way and something else turns that way. No, no, there's so much little stuff that happens that you don't even realize. Yeah. Um, and f as far as like, can you actually buy a cart online, just have it show up like all done? Oh, yeah. Uh. yeah. And I, we've had some come oh. in the shop and, oh. and they're, they're garbage. Like How does that? It's built terribly. So you're paying maybe a couple hundred dollars to have uh, M squared build your cart, you know, but you're paying for 25 years of There's knowing no how to put carts together. So it's a, uh, that would be like ordering a pair of ski boots online. And it's like, just throw in some custom fitted foot pads. And my foot kind of looks like this. Is that <laughs> yeah. good enough? Here's a picture of my foot. Yeah. Just <laughs> do that. It's not like a, I'm not saying a scan or something else. Like we have technology to do that, but no. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's kind of, well, that and the, and the local knowledge that your shop has on where to position a seat uh, based on the type of tire we're using or the engine that you're using with the asphalt that we have, that knowledge is invaluable. Mm. And, and, you know, and we, we build a lot of carts and ship them all over the country, but we're, we're backing that off of, okay, more than likely we've been to that track before yeah. we've raced there. We're going to ask you what tire you're running, what class you're going to be running in, what weight category you're going to be running in. Um, and so we're, we're going to take all of those factors and, and that's going to go into how we build that cart. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. And, and actually just to add on to that, I mean, I've seen Mike call people that he knows from different places around the country that are maybe local to that track, say what gear. Oh, right. You know, he'll call and get the info. So when the cart arrives, it's ready for that track whereas people will buy carts on the internet they'll show up to our track you know they're on the rev limiter right as they come on the straightaway i mean and then they don't have anyone to turn to because they bought it from uh, florida and uh yeah we see, yeah they, for sure they, they show up wander over and um you're like well this is wrong and this I is love, wrong i love the, the generic beanie uh question and answer so what's <laughs> what's the tooth it's like oh it'll probably be about 72 give <laughs> give or take a couple teeth and and uh, and, and we want to try to help everyone i mean so i, I don't want a customer a, a local club event should be a very inviting place for sure. everyone and and i especially understand how newer drivers can feel in, intimidated by just the atmosphere and I was intimidated. I was lucky enough to have some really good friends in the paddock and I was yeah. surrounded by friends and I was, yeah. it was a little bit over my head. Cause one of the most enjoyable things from my standpoint of being in the industry, as long as I've been is helping new people, uh, achieve their goals in the sport. And, and I, I really, really enjoy that probably now more so than anything. And so I don't want customers to feel like they can't approach, uh, a cart shop member and and ask them you know really blunt questions you know you know what gear should i be on